Hello everyone, and today I want to explain why Sticky Pistons spit out their blocks. So for those of you who don't know, Sticky Piston spitting out its block is a behavior where if a Sticky Piston gets powered by a short pulse, such as from an observer, then it actually won't retract the block. Because normally, uh, if I power it with, say, like a redstone block or something, it will normally retract the block, right? But if I power it with a pulse shorter than three game ticks, for example, from an observer, then it will actually leave the block. So first, you need to know a couple things about how pistons extend and retract and all the random stuff with block 36. So this is the life cycle of an extending piston. So the piston first is just this block, then it gets converted into a headless piston, or just a piston base rather, same thing really, but there's a block 36 of a moving piston in front of it of uh, the piston head actually because block 36 if you don't know it's actually was called block 36 but now it's called moving piston so i've actually set something to moving piston so i can use the set block command and set it to moving piston and it doesn't look like there's anything there but i don't know if you can tell but i'm like clicking here and i can't yeah place anything there and you also can't move it but yeah if i set it back to air um, then you can like move in everything. It's like a normal spot. Now, what this essentially means is that like anything, when it starts extending or retracting, it's going to create a block 36 of itself at its destination. So like this piston head, uh, wants to become a piston head right here. So like, that's what it wants to be. Um, so that's why it's going to create a block 36, uh, over here. And then after the two game ticks, three game ticks rather, it's actually going to place the block there. Because pistons technically they take two game ticks to finish extending, but they need one extra game tick to kind of like set the block, um, to turn it from a block 36 into a moving block. So the next thing I want to show is this actually applies to everything else. So like a moving block here, you can see this piston, it wants to extend this block so that it's going to be over here. And it's going to turn it into a headless piston with block 36 of the piston head and the block 36 of the moving block, um, each at their destination. And this is the final phase where it's fully extended, blah, 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 doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's basically how pistons extend, um, simplified a little bit because there's a bit more to it than that. But I also want to show a strange phenomenon where, like, not strange, but if you freeze the game, for example, I'm just going to do this so it's easier to do stuff. And I power this and I do tick step two, or just even one, the piston now starts extending, right? So... It started, yeah, extending, and if I actually turn on the hitboxes, you can see that this piston head is already, like, halfway there. But that doesn't matter. Essentially, this piston is already extending, but if I remove the power source and I do tick step one more, then what it would do is it would instantly finish the extension and then start retracting. And I'll show in the code why that actually works, but essentially that's another um, phenomenon that, like, you can schedule blockman for retraction while a piston is still extending. So the next thing is that retracting blocks, they also do the same thing. They create a block 36 themselves at the destination, whatever. It doesn't matter as much. But the important part is that the piston, when it retracts, or when it starts retracting, rather, um, when it gets a block event for retraction, then it's actually going to check for a block 36 right here. So, like, when it turns into a block 36 and everything, well, like, when it starts retracting pretty much, then it's going to check for block 36 at this spot. So two blocks in front of it, like, where it would be. And it has to meet some certain conditions for what we want it to happen. But so if there is a block 36 there and if it meets the conditions, then it will actually instantly finish the extension of the block 36. Now, what could possibly cause a block 36 to be there? But first, I want to explain the conditions. Um, first one is that it has to be an extension. Second one is that it has to be moving in the same direction as the piston. So yeah, and if both of those things are true, then it's going to set the block over here. And it has to be a sticky piston specifically, so it wouldn't work with a normal piston. Now, what could possibly cause a block 36 of a moving block um, to be right here? Well, the extension of something. So like when something's extending, it's going to create a block 36 of itself here. And the block 36 stores some data, like its extension, its, what direction it's moving, etc. But, so the block 36 is going to be like right here, right? You see, remember... That's that, but if we instantly finish the extension of the piston, of the sticky piston, and then it's going to start retracting now, then it's going to check for any block 36s right here, and that's explicitly written in the code that if there is a block 36 that's moving in the same direction, 
and if it's an extension then it's going to instantly set the block to be over here so yeah that's pretty much um sort of the gist of it now i'm going to show um what's actually going to happen here so this is the entire life cycle of the piston dropping the block okay so you can see at the start it's here and at the end it's here but uh so this on this side of the end rods the piston is powered okay so the piston starts extending and it creates block 36 of the piston head and of block that's going to move and so still it's powered now passing the end rods it's no longer powered so it actually instantly finishes the extension i technically um there's technically one more phase where it's like fully extended here because yeah it instantly like finishes extending and now it can start retracting now there's still the block 36 here because it didn't finish that yet at least not yet. Um, now, this piston, when it gets the block event for a retraction, it's going to check for a block 36 of the block over here, and it met all the criteria, meaning that it's an extension and it's moving in the same direction, and this piston has to be a sticky piston, of course, because like if it's not a sticky piston, then it doesn't work. And then, yeah, so now, essentially, if it met all those criteria, then it's going to set the block, um, but since... Yeah, it already started retracting before the block was there yet. Um, then the block didn't get pulled back. So essentially, that's um, sort of the gist of the life cycle of the piston you know, dropping the block. And the reason that this only works with short pulses is because when it gets depowered, it has to get depowered while it's still extending. Or before this block actually got set over here, and before yeah, all these blocks turn into like non-moving blocks, Alright, so now I'm going to go into the code and show you everything that sort of like contributes to this behavior. Alright, so this is yarn mappings. Uh, these are yarn mappings, or this is code um, deobfuscated using yarn mappings. Anyway, this is the try move method of the piston block. And this try move method, if I like click on it here, you can see the highlighted stuff is where uh, the try move method is called. So pretty much when it gets place and like when it gets a block update, but that doesn't matter. Um, essentially, this try move method, what this, uh, yeah, does is, you know, pretty much it just schedules the block events. But anyway, now, don't pay attention to this. Um, this is for the extension. This is for the retraction. So, essentially, this BL, uh, you can see here, boolean BL is this dot should extend and some parameters. Essentially, this boolean is telling it if it should extend, and this exclamation mark is saying if it shouldn't extend, it's so, like it inverts that, and this is an and sign, or short circuit and, it doesn't matter really, and and if it's extended, um, don't worry about this, it's just a cast um, to figure out like what it means by extended or not extended, um, but essentially, if, it's, if it shouldn't be extended, but it is extended, then it's going to do some stuff here and this all this stuff is inside of this if statement so it makes a new block position um two blocks in the direction of the extension so essentially this part or that line of code it checks for the block 36 uh right here see so like remember i said that it would check if there's a block 36 right there well that's what it does right now so yeah whenever you see this block pause it's the position of two blocks in front of it now this block state is just getting the block state at that position and this int i equals one it does nothing else except just uh, schedule a different type of block so anyway now this if statement says if block state dot is of moving piston so essentially if we have a block 36 at that spot and if the block state dot get facing equals direction so this part is just saying if it's facing in the same direction then it gets the block entity at that position um, then if the block entity is an instance of a piston block entity, so like if it's a moving piston or block 36 essentially, I'm not sure what's really the point of this because I think, don't we really like check that it's a moving piston? But anyway, now if block entity instance of piston block entity, um, piston block entity is, okay, so it just casts it over to a piston block entity. So essentially, so we can just do piston stuff with it. So now if piston block entity dot is extending and piston block entity dot get progress and blah 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 bunch of stuff, it doesn't really matter. The important part is that if it's extending, um then it sets um i to two. And what that does is allow it to schedule block event for retraction 
but also because it's already it's going to schedule a block vent for attraction no matter what right but it checks for moving piston two blocks in front of it and if it there is a moving piston two blocks in front of it then it's going to be a different type of block event and yeah I'll show that later but one thing to note is that this all this did all this piece of code did is allow the piston to is allow the piston to retract while it's still extending so like zero tick pulses uh, one tick pulses and the two game tick pulses it pretty much just allows that but it didn't say anything about setting a block there so essentially at this point the sticky piston actually acts like this normal piston so if i do tick freeze and i do that and i do tick step one and i remove that and tick step one more you can see that this block is on its way to being over here and technically if i turn on hitboxes you can actually see it's kind of arrived there but it takes one more game tick for it to turn into a solid block it doesn't matter um you can see that it didn't actually instantly make it appear there and if i just do um do that again the same comparison but with a sticky piston here on the side and powering them again doing tick step one depowering tick step one uh you can see that this moving block that was pushed by a sticky piston or by a normal piston rather uh, it actually didn't get set over here whereas the stick piston you can see that this is already a solid block and everything i can place blocks next to it um and i can break it whereas this isn't a solid block yet you can see like i can place blocks behind it like yeah so essentially what i'm saying is that this piston the sticky piston actually has the unique ability to instantly set its block to be over here all right so um down here we have this method on synced block event and this is pretty much when it receives a block event it's going to do some stuff so remember our block event um so in this case it was going to be type 2 because it had a block in front of it like it, it was extending a block so it's going to be a type 2 block event so it's definitely not type 0 so we can just like ignore all that stuff and everything we need here is going to be inside of this or or inside of um this block here or inside of yeah this if statement so essentially first here this bit of code is if, if block entity remember over here where it had a block entity or moving piston a block 36 of its piston head right here so it's checking for that and if it's a piston block entity then it's gonna finish it it's gonna finish that extension and yeah so it's yeah just gonna instantly make that piston finish extending so now we can start retracting right so now um it's gonna get a block state of mother stuff and essentially this part all it does is it allows it to start retracting and it just uh, um updates everything around it now this is the cool bit of code yeah this little bit of code if this not sticky and essentially that's checking if it's a sticky piston right and block pause, block pause is block pause dot add, is pause dot add, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's getting the block state of that position, um, doesn't really matter. And now if block state to that is of moving piston, so this is essentially checking if we have a block 36, two blocks in front of it. So that's what it's checking. Now it's going to get a block entity at that position, and it's going to see if it's a piston block entity, if it's a type of piston block entity. And if it is, this bit of code is going to run. So now it's just casting it to a piston block entity. And if it's facing the same direction, or if it's facing in the same direction as our piston extension, and if it is also an extension, so it can't be a sort of a retraction or anything, it has to be specifically an extension, then it's going to instantly finish that extension, right? So remember over here, so this sticky piston, instantly place this block over here the moment that it got a block vent for retraction whereas this normal piston because it isn't part it isn't a sticky piston right so that bit of code doesn't even get run so this block is still a block 36 it's still a moving block so yeah and that's pretty much it in terms of this there's nothing much else um to explain here that's pretty much all that it, there is to yeah sticky pistons dropping their blocks anyway yeah guys that's gonna be it for today i really hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!